after even just one year of living through this troubling time, these Christians may lose their faith. For if they were wrong about the preacher of rapture, they will begin to question other things. Perhaps they were wrong about many other end-time prophecies. And perhaps they will come to taking the mark of the beast because they don't believe they can out sin God's grace and because they begin to believe the teachings of the Antichrist who will really be a counterfeit Christ. So, while it may not seem like a dangerous teaching or that there can be any negative effects or consequences uh, to doing these things, I believe there are and will be serious consequences for doing them and serious consequences for believing in the pre-trib rapture. This will be especially dangerous for the person who believes that they also cannot out sin God's grace, that they believe in once saved, always saved, that salvation is by faith alone, and that there is nothing they can do to lose their salvation. If they believe in both the pre-trib rapture and the teachings I just described, well then, they will be very susceptible to the false teachings of the counterfeit Christ and the false prophet. And in all likelihood, they will end up taking the mark of the beast. Because even taking the mark of the beast will be viewed as a sin that cannot separate them from God. That because they are a born-again Christian, because they've said a sinner's prayer, being water baptized, then there is nothing else they need to do and there is nothing that they can do to lose their salvation or separate themselves from God. Well, these are teachings that are going to become a stumbling block when the counterfeit Christ and the false prophet come on the scene, when the beast system is in place. Let's run over, if you will, to the book of Galatians chapter 2, and uh, this is the book, you know, that Paul had to write to the Galatian church because it looked like they wanted to go back into bondage. And he said, I'm so surprised uh, that um, you have uh, gone to another gospel, which really is not another, but there be some who trouble you and would pervert the gospel. And those, those uh, gospel perverters are still in the world. Did you know that? They're knocking on the doors awful thick these days. And unless you're grounded in the Word of God, uh, your preacher's going to be saying, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is really not another. And Paul went ahead to say, If any man preach any other gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be a curse. Put the curse of God on him. If he preaches any other gospel, there's not but one. Now let's begin reading at verse 16 of the second chapter of the book of Galatians. Now, folks, if you miss the foundation of the message, you may miss the superstructure tonight. I'm talking with you, and I'm laying the foundation, or letting the Lord lay it with his word, in the 16th verse, knowing that, that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, not any of it. No flesh shall be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now then, let's go a little bit further. We'll have to go to the third chapter, and I believe we'll have to sort of cease our reading along here in the uh, third chapter, beginning in verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them 
But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it's evident. For the just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Now then, I want to read another verse, starting uh, at the 22nd verse, I believe, of that same third chapter. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, here it is, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster, for you're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, I believe I'll stop reading there. Now let me give you an illustration. He said that the, uh, that the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. After we get to Christ, we're delivered uh, from the law. I mean, the law kills. It, the law kills. The law has nothing to do, so far as our salvation is concerned, after we get saved. We're not saved by the law. We're, we're diagnosed by the law. For instance, there's a man out here, and Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life that I may live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And so, I see over here, in, and I saw the uh, uh, hearse taken off while ago, uh, with a siren, looked like they were going to maybe pick up a body or something. And uh, now, when a, when a person dies, the law didn't have anything to do with them. You can put a dead man in the back of uh, a funeral car, and you can drive 125 miles an hour. It doesn't bother him. They can run every red light in town. Don't bother him. I mean, you can, you can put a pistol on each side of him in a casket with him and load it to the hills. But I'll guarantee you, when the officers run that hearse down and pull you over to the side, they're not filing charges against him. Amen? I mean, it just doesn't affect him one way or the other. I mean, the man driving the car doesn't look back and said, Hey, bud, said, am I going too fast for you? You don't mind me running through this red light, do you? Oh, don't bother me. Just go ahead. Well, I'm dead to that red light. Amen? Huh. I'm dead to all speed limits. Just take off. Hey, you see what I'm talking about? Brother, the law kills, and we're dead to the law. And then we live in Christ, and Christ lives in us. Uh, these laws, they got passed around here in Tampa. They don't bother me a great deal. They don't bother me. I mean, uh, they got laws over here in Tampa, Florida, that said you can't even kill anybody. Isn't that a sight? Of course, I tell you what, that doesn't keep them from killing them, does it? That law has nothing to do with the lawless. Amen? But those of us who are not under the law, we don't need that law. There's a law here in Tampa that says that you're not to enter another man's house and take anything out of it. That doesn't affect me. I don't want what you got in your house. God saw to it that I'd have enough to put in my own house, and so I just trust him for it. Amen? That law don't bother me. My boys are on pro all of them on probation. And sometimes they say, well, Brother Roloff, they gave me five years probation. I said, I won't bother you as long as you live right. I said, I, I wouldn't care. Tell the judge he can put me on five years probation if he wants to. Amen? Praise God. I tell you, law don't bother God's children. We're not under law. We're under grace. Under grace. And I'm going to show you in a minute, and I'm going to take plenty of time, so stay with me, on how to get into grace. Oh, I tell you, wonderful, dear friend is this great doctrine. There's just one doctrine in the Bible. And the world's so confused about it. And that's grace. They don't understand. I get so tired of hearing people say, well, I'm for grace just as much as you are. But I don't but my grace. I just go ahead and believe it's all of grace. 
Oh, listen, dear friend. You'd say, Brother Olaf, let me ask you a question. Do you believe it's possible to fall from grace? If the Bible says so, yes. I said, if the Bible says so. You said, all right, I got you. Read it. I'll read it for you. It's found in the book of Galatians. That same book we've been reading out of, isn't it? Huh? Turn on over. Let's get it. We can't run from anything in the Bible. If the Bible says you've got to be baptized in order to be saved, I believe that. And that's exactly what it says. Amen? I didn't think some of you would say. Just two amens on that. We don't have to be afraid. man said to me, oh, I think it's over in Texas, he said, uh, Brother Olaf, you know, you ought to join our movement. There's only one thing that you leave out, and that's um, you, you, you don't preach that you've got to be baptized in order to be saved. I said, that's what you think. I preach it. He said, you mean you preach that you've got to be baptized in order to be saved and go to heaven? I said, man, I guess I do. Well, he said, boy, you, you're ready to join up with our movement. <laughs> he said, and he asked me again. I said, sure, I believe that. The Bible said by one spirit were you all baptized into Christ. That's baptism. I said, the difference between me, you talk about the creek, and I talk about Christ. <laughs> I'm talking about grace tonight. Brother, you're not saved by works and grace. You're not saved by grace through faith plus works, or plus baptism, or plus a trip to the priest, or plus the Virgin Mary, or plus the Baptist church. You're saved by grace through faith plus Nothing. You don't believe it? You're all warped in your doctrine. This is the message of the Bible. This is the message of the Bible. This is the thing that's anchored my poor stumbling feet through these 30 years. This is the one thing that kept me from going to the right and going to the left or detouring. This is the one thing that's held me these 30 years is salvation by grace. Greatest revelation God ever gave my little old foggy mind was when he told me, Son, I paid it all. I paid it all. Brother, you'll go to heaven completely by the blood of Christ or you'll not go at all. Praise the Lord for his wonderful goodness. I tell you, well, he said, Christ has become of no effect unto you whosoever you are justified by the law. You're fallen from grace. Well, looks to me like a man can fall from grace. Yes, sir. Said you're fallen from grace. But wait a minute. Read that whole thing. Who's he talking to? He's talking to a bunch of people that had renounced salvation by grace. He's talking to a bunch that went back under the yoke, to the yoke of bondage. He went, but they went back to the law. And he said, by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And you folks that have refused to come to Christ in grace, he said, you've fallen away from being justified by grace. And they were in grace. I can fall away from the Tampa Bay. I sure can. I can fall from Tampa Bay. But it doesn't mean I'm in Tampa Bay. If I fall in the opposite direction, I'm falling from it. And oh, my dear friend, there's a lot of people that have fallen from grace because they never were in grace.